Hello and welcome to Amortization Schedule with Spill Ranges. My name's Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Hey, let's just jump right in, okay? What we're trying to build, what we're trying to build is a dynamic amortization schedule that's going to give us the number of rows that there are months, all right? And so we're going to type in some basic loan information here, and we want the schedule to be filled out. So what we're going to use is um, the dynamic array functions. Depending on when you're watching this video, your Excel may not have these uh, dynamic array functions or spill ranges. Um, uh, but let's go ahead and just demonstrate these anyway. Equal sequence. All right, the sequence function is a dynamic array function. It returns one or more results. If the function returns more than one result, the results spill out into a spill range. So the sequence function allows us to define the number of rows. We want, you know, six or however many months there are. And there's optional arguments. We could also do columns. We could define the start and the step values. But for now, we're just going to go with, uh, with cell C8. And watch what happens when we hit enter. Okay. Since this function, since this formula returned more than one value, the values spill into a spill range. All right, what happens if we have a loan with three months? Then we get three rows. 12, 12, on and on. It's 360, 360. Let's go back to six. Now, that is the sequence function. Let's skip beginning bounds for now. Let's do interest. Now, for the interest payment, there's a function that's been in Excel for decades called iPayment, and it calculates the interest for any period of a loan. But Jeff, time out. That's not an array function. I know, but <laughs> check this out. We're going to convince it to return multiple rows also. So let, let's just take it one step at a time. Equals I payment. All right, what is the rate? The rate is going to be our annual interest rate divided by 12, comma, for which period? Well, it's going to be for the period that's on the same row. Comma, what's the total number of periods? It's the number of months. And what's the present value of the loan? It's this amount right here. Let's close the function and hit enter, and let's make a couple of observations. First of all, it's a negative number, and that's no big deal. That's just a cash flow model. So we'll just flip the sign by using a leading, you know, dash, enter. Okay, but now let's look at something. That returned a single value. So all we need to do is say, instead of looking at B14, we want to look at the entire spill range. The way that we do that is we use a, a trailing um, pound or hash. So if we do this, now that's referencing the entire spill range. Watch what happens when we hit enter. <laughs> All right, and now we can go with uh, three, uh, we can go with 12, okay? It's a dynamic spill range. Boom, love it. Now we're gonna do the same thing with principal. It's called uh, uh, principal payment, PPMT. It's been in Excel for decades. The rate is going to be um, the annual interest rate divided by 12. The period is gonna be this right with the hash to get the entire spill range number of periods is this and present value is this close function and enter got it now for ending balance really what what we want to calculate is going to be um the uh principal uh, uh the cumulative principal payment okay and then we'll just take the difference between the amount. So let's just kind of break it down. First of all, let's get cumulative principal payment. To do that, we're going to use a function that's been in Excel for decades called cumul cumul sorry, cumulative principal payment. All right. The rate, the rate is going to be our annual rate divided by 12. Easy. The number of periods, that is going to be our number of months. The present value, that is going to be this. The start period, okay, what is this? The start period is going to be 1 because we want it from, from inception, so start period 1, comma, end period. Now, technically, it would be great if we could just give it this plus the hash, comma, and then we want to do uh, payment at the end, so we'll go with uh, 0 here. Okay, and then when I hit enter, I don't get uh, multiple results. In fact, I get an error. Okay, but no worries, because if a function that we're trying to use doesn't support that spill range reference, or if it creates an error, we can still get around this. We can just go with the sequence function. And the sequence function, we can, we can embed or nest right inside of an argument. 
So again, for the sequence function, we want this many rows. And we can close that function and hit Enter. And that forces it into a, um, a dynamic array. Um, so this is the cumulative interest. So to get the, the ending balance, all we really need to do is um, add this amount here, plus and enter. And this looks right. Um, and then to get the beginning balance, really what that's going to be is it's going to be equal to um, however much we paid in principal, plus this ending balance. And if, you know, just to kind of reinforce this, if I hit enter, it's just going to give me one result. But instead, I want the entire spill range, so I'm going to use these uh, trailing hash and enter. And there we got it. Okay. And now we save and close, and, and we're good. And we have um, three, three periods. That's good. Six is good. Twelve is good. If we had, you know, 30 years, that's fine. And all the way down should be zero. Yes. Okay. So that is... Um, Creating an amortization, creating an amortization schedule um, using dynamic array formulas and spill ranges. Hey, hope it helped. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.